Hello, and welcome to the High Rulian Chronicles, a podcast from the Plates Heart Repeat crew, where we review and go in depth on the story of the entire Legend of Zelda timeline. This episode, we're talking about Hyrule's beginnings and Skyward Sword. I'm Oliver, and I'm joined by Lewis and Alex. Hello. Hello. So, first of all, I'm going to. I've condensed the story before Skyward Sword. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read it out. Okay. Um, so. First things first, we need to go way back to the beginning. Here's a story of Legend of Zelda leading up to the beginning of Skyward Sword. So before there was Hyrule as we know it, there was just a clusterfuck of chaos. Tired of this bullshit, the three golden goddesses decided to sort it out. Din, the goddess of power, created the world. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, bestowed order upon said world. And finally, Faroe, the goddess of courage, for better or worse, created life. Looking at their creation, the goddesses decided, fuck this shit, I'm out and left, but not without leaving behind a fraction of each of their power in the form of the Triforce, an item that would bestow upon its keeper their greatest wish, which was definitely a good idea, it couldn't possibly go wrong at all. The Triforce was entrusted to the goddess Hylia, but one day Demon King and all-round Bell and Demise decided that he wanted to nick it and raise an army against the forces of Hyrule. Hylia saw her ass and sent both the Triforce and all surviving humans above the clouds to an outcrop of floating land, which would become known as Skyloft. Hylia then rallied all remaining land dwellers, who were obviously not important enough to be sent to the sky, and fought back the forces of Demise and sealed them away. A bit worse for wear, and knowing Demise couldn't be trapped forever, Hylia renounced her divinity and transferred her soul to the body of a human, who, if she timed it correctly, would come to age around the time that Demise returned. In her final act, she created the goddess sword and imbued it with the spirit of Fee, who would aid her chosen hero when it came to claim the sword. So that's everything up until, that I know of, up until the beginning of Skyward Sword. So before we go into the story, we've, we've reached the beginning of Skyward Sword, and therefore, I'll, can we have opening statements just like we do a video game book club, please? Lewis. Well, so just my general thoughts on General the thoughts on the game. Um, uh, basing this off, uh, my preconception of this game was that it was bad. Um, obviously because that's all anyone said for the past like 10 years or whatever um so going into this i wasn't expecting great things um luckily with the re-release everyone seems to have changed their mind uh, and now suddenly thinks the game is actually quite a good zelda game and i can honestly agree uh i don't there are definitely issues with the game which i'll get into later um but for the most part it was a really enjoyable 3d zelda experience and um I kind of regret not playing it back in the day. Um, but that just sort of shows that you probably shouldn't listen to what everyone says about stuff and just sort of make your own opinion. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have a score you want to give it? Uh, if I was going to give it a... Just as an overall game, I'd give it like a 7 out of 10. Seven if I was going to give it a score as like a Zelda game, probably a 6. Alex, opening statement. Uh, I thought it was really good. Um I think it's the weakest 3D Zelda that I've played, though. I, I played all of them apart from Wind Waker. So, yeah. yeah. I'd say... What did I give it on Hard to Beat now? I think I gave it an 8. Yeah. I, 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 re- I Sorry, go on. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'll just say I played with motion controls. I know Lewis played with motion controls Yes, I also well. played with motion controls. Because uh, that was the, the way the game was designed. So I was like, right, I'm just going to play it like that. I tried the button controls and I didn't like them. I didn't like how you used the sword. It annoyed me. Um, so I was like, I'll just try motion controls. And then I thought they were fine. Um, but yeah, good game. Good game. Yeah, I also gave it an 8 out of 10. I don't think it's the weakest... Saying it's the weakest 3D Zelda seems harsh. But now that you mention it, I'm trying to think of all the 3D Zeldas. And I can't think of one that I'd... You, you I, can't I don't, think of one you rank above it. Yeah, well, well, no, the, the, oh, no, the plenty of that rank above it that rank me rank below it. Um, to, well, be, to, be, to be Ocarina of Time, the, the like, the, to be honest, we might might go below it. It's probably that's probably one of the least favorite ones. Sorry. Shot in the face. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's when yes. you think about it. There's not that many 3D Zellers to begin with. There's like mm, five rounds. Really five. Yeah. Um. So it makes sense, really, why you struggle to think. That's why, but that's the thing, though. That's why it's still, even though it's the weakest one, which I still top five. Well, yeah, yeah. It's still, still top five. Like it's still yeah. a good game. Yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time with it. There are some obviously big niggling issues that we'll get into, but yeah, it put a perfectly, perfectly great game. I'd say I, I give it yeah. a great out of ten. You know what I mean? About the Zelda game, like I did, because like I said, as a Zelda game, I give it a six. 
As a Zelda game, uh, you give it a six. My God. As, as in like a, as a as a game, give it a seven. As a Zelda, I give it a six. Oh, it's deep Ma- in yeah, maybe though. a six or a seven for a Zelda game. I don't. I don't. I won't know how to separate the two. Um, like score systems, to be honest with you. It, to me, well, I don't want to get into this because of like games, because I, I want to talk about the games when we get to them, yeah. and I don't want to talk about other games too much. But like in terms of highs of like my favorite game, which would be Twilight Princess, yeah, which I would give a ten. Compared to that, it's nowhere near. <laughs> yeah, it's nowhere I'm with near you. Twilight Princess to me. So that's why I give it a six, which again isn't bad; it's above average. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think I'll stick with my eight. I'll stick with my eight for that. Fair, fair. Yeah. Because there's plenty of games that I'd put below it that I have played in the Zelda series. Yeah, that, yeah. That, I'd, that I'd put I'd put below it. But anyway, so so which versions of the game have you have you guys played? Have you only played the Switch versions? I've only played the Switch version. Yeah, not same, played yeah. the Wii version. Yeah. I oh. like when I was younger, I wanted to get the game, and when I was gonna get the game, there was like, have you got the Wii Motion Plus? And I was like, no. And there was like, you need that. Was like, how much is that? It's like extra twenty pound. And I was just, I didn't have, I didn't have the money when I was like. How yeah. old would I have been? Yeah, like 13? Yeah, 13, something like yeah. that. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, I'll just get something else then. And then I never played it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much here. Like, I liked Zelda at the time. Um, at that specific time, I'd just come off playing Twilight Princess, so I was, like, really into Zelda. But even at that time, lots of, like, news outlets and stuff and just people in general were saying the game wasn't very good. Yeah. Uh, and as a young impressionable child I, I took that to heart and was just like well it must be bad then so I just didn't bother and obviously as the years went on I just didn't really care and didn't really think about it so I just always had it in my mind that it was this awful Zelda game that was like the worst thing to ever exist uh, which obviously wasn't true yeah I mean, I, I, so I, I've played both versions I've, I was 18 when it came out so I had the money to buy it and I bought it with the, you know, the gold Wii Motion yeah, the gold, Plus inside yeah, yeah. I think which was really cool. And I remember feeling frustrated with it when it first came out. So this is because the motion controls, I mean, the, the pro, the, I think they're improved in the new version, but back then they were janky. They really were janky. Like, those, especially when, like, what sticks in my head is, Joe, when you've got the eyeballs on the certain, like, dungeon doors and you've got to, like, move it mm. around like yes. that. It just wouldn't yes. work at all. It was so frustrating. So the, for that reason, I played the Switch version recently with button controls and I thought they were perfectly fine. Like I'd I'd much rather play it that way. Because I played I played it almost exclusively handheld anyway. Uh I I'd much prefer to play it that way. It's just it's just it's instead of like waving around like a like like an umpty, you're uh you are you are just flicking a stick. You know what I mean? It's great and it works. The only issue is you can't really control the camera that well when you're using button controls. Yeah, because you got hold like what is it? Uh L B Whatever yeah. it is on Switch. ZL. ZL. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one. Yeah, and then you've got to move it. And then I thought the camera was really slow when you did it. I don't know if you could change the speed of the well, camera. Well, well, but I then I was that. just like, yeah, I'm changing to motion controls. Yeah, I use that. I use um, Z. Uh, Z well, the, the, I think it's the left, the left trigger. If you press that, then yeah. it will automatically switch to the view behind Link. Yeah, that's all, that's yeah, all so I use for the camera. Like in every other Zelda. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah literally exactly. All I do. So it's that that made like it makes it a little bit easy. You don't have to hold it to like kind of like fine tune mm. it or anything like that. Uh, mm. So I just I just did that. You, got, you get used to it. It's just like going back and playing an old Zelda, Zelda game. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So do we have any big issues with the game outside of the story? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, most it. of my issues most of my issues come from the gameplay, not the actual story. Yeah. Um, so as just said, I don't want to backtrack too much, but I did play motion controls. The motion controls that didn't work half the time. I'm not going to act like they did. Like, I, I want to say maybe I'm just an outlier here and maybe I just wasn't calibrated properly with the controls, even though I did calibrate the Joy-Cons multiple times. But in the early in the early parts of the game, I was like, wow, these motion controls aren't that bad at all. Like, um, I genuinely thought like people were like crazy saying like the controls weren't very good. Um, and that, or maybe they've just been fixed massively for the Switch. But as the like, I got about halfway through the game, the issues started to pile up, and it really started to get on my nerves. Um, whether it was just like an enemy that needed to be hit diagonally, and even though I'd swing diagonally, Link would just swing up or he'd swing to the side, and I'd have to like do it over and over again. And obviously, that caused more frustration, having to constantly repeat the action, which in turn was probably 
making me play worse and the reason he wasn't responding was because I was getting annoyed. Yeah. Um but yeah the controls awful. Um well not awful. The controls just not very good. Um and I'm very happy that we're in a we're in a modern age where we don't use most controls for our Zelda games. I'm happy that we've got uh button controls. Got past um, that, yeah. As well as that um I felt like there was some uh, backtracking issues that could have very easily been solved. I know the loft wing was like the big thing about the game, um, and that was like one of like the it, I don't know it was it was it was an aspect of the game that I I honestly thought was going to be used more, but yeah. it was only really used to fly to the next levels, which made it more annoying. If anything, just because of how slow and clunky controlling it was, um, towards the back end of the game, especially when you're um collecting um uh when you're collecting the um the songs the amount of times you had to switch from area to area and it took so long and it easily could have been fixed with just a fast travel system because they had a fast travel down below so i don't know why they didn't have it up top i think it was mainly just because they wanted you to use the loft wing um and i feel like maybe they had more ideas for the loft wing and they just didn't implement them or maybe the, the loft wing was a last minute decision and they thought it'd be fun. Um, yeah. But I felt like it was very underutilized and it was just more of a time waste, if anything. Um, I think those were my main issues with the game from what I remember right now. Yeah, no, so the, so the, lo the loft wings might have been less of an issue with you if you if you use the button controls because it's not obviously not holding it, trying to like turn it like that or anything like that. You just it's just it's that's true, control. but it, it still doesn't stop the time waste though. No, it doesn't. I, like yeah, it's, 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 I feel there was a pattern with the loft wings, like you needed to like the like, grass was just like you. you I, I flopped up to, as high as I could, and then yeah. I used all three of my boosts and then dropped and then just rinsed and repeated. Like that, because it do, it does take a long time. I do I do get what you mean. Like the, the, to put like the fast travel gate or the fat the boost gates and stuff like that. But even that yeah, doesn't, yeah. doesn't sort it out. Yeah, it's they're just, very sparse you know, as well. It's just a really weird way of like it's just the fact that it was in the sky. I think that's, they had to put birds in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a way to travel. Yeah, Alex, any issue, glaring issues? Yeah, uh, hopping onto the uh, the skyloft. Uh, what, the, what what are the birds called again? Loftwing. Loftwings. Loftwing. Um, I thought it was really weird how they made it like a big deal. They like, oh, Link's got a crimson uh, Loftwing, and then it's never mentioned ever again. <laughs> like, why he has a crimson one? And it was just sort of like, all right, yeah, you just got a different color Loftwing to everyone else. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that was a weird thing. Like you said, they probably had like a bigger like role for him, but then they just like it was yeah, like, have oh. to have, otherwise, what was the point? <laughs> yeah, uh, and I thought it was weird that you couldn't name it either. Yeah. Like you could name a Pona yeah. in every other like Zelda game, but you can't name your Loftwing. It's just oh, it's my Loftwing. Yeah, you don't yeah, get name. these animals' names at all. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, these things um, that save you from falling to your death whenever you decide to just jump off the platform, which I think is a big, a big oh. ask of a bird, by the way. A big ask. Yeah, big ask. <laughs> just, just be think, there. <laughs> before you carry on, Alex, I just want to mention real quick. It annoyed me to no end that you had to jump off on those specific platforms. Yeah. Because the yeah. amount of times I just yeeted off the... <laughs> yeeted I the did island, it a few times. Expecting to fly and he'd just fall. And it would, oh, well, it's so stupid annoying. because you just call the bird anyway. <laughs> yeah. So why can't I jump off so, anywhere so and just annoying. call the bird? Yeah. Mine are great. Yeah, it was annoying. But yeah, kind yeah. Of um, I didn't like how there was basically only three areas on the ground. Yes. Because yeah. you revisit the same three areas yeah. twice. I would have preferred to have six separate areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was like an annoying thing as well, because it you pretty much did it like oh let's go here 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 oh but you go in like a different order this time. Yeah. To... Yeah, it's, but, it's, yeah, I didn't. I didn't it's like that. Strange considering the previous game in the series, like Twilight Princess, well the previous three D games had so had many, so many areas. Yeah. Like, it, it was a, it was a different area for every dungeon, and there were big yeah. areas as well as like lots to explore. It's like so into my major gripes, gripes of it. So I, I enjoy, I, I did enjoy it for the most part. Again, the controls are always going to be a contentious issue. They're always going to be a contentious issue, but it's just they fixed it the best they could, in my opinion, to not completely have to redo the game. But yeah. uh, towards the end of the game when you are collecting songs is one of the worst times that I've had in any video game ever. Espe like speaking specifically about the one where you collect the music notes. Yep. And it's, you know, yep. Like, it was talking about this yesterday, we were talking about this yesterday, Lewis. Like, and it's like, it's, 
it's just the fact that you've got even even with stick controls, the water, like the yep. movement in the water is so bad. It's Awful. so bad, so sluggish. And I mean, you, you, the, the music notes out on the map. Yep, you know, you have to you have you have to find them yourself or look up a guide on the internet to just where they are because yeah. otherwise it's bollocks. It just takes so long, and, and it feels to me like an artificial game lengthener. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Well, it was it, it was definitely a game lengthener. It took me <laughs> thirty five minutes, yeah. I think. Um, I made the argument yesterday, which may be a bold claim, that it may be the worst mission I've done in any video game mm. ever. Like, it was honestly an unpleasant, like, 40 minutes of just me hating my life. Um, and I just don't really get why they did it. Because at first, I thought you only had to, like, collect, collect some of the notes. Yeah. And it wanted, like, a specific note. But nah, we wanted all of them. All every, of them. every single one. Yeah, I got, um, I got sad because there's three lines of notes when you collect them. I thought, oh, I'll be collecting the first line. Yeah. And then the other yeah, line, yeah. the other notes will come from the other areas. No, yep. it's so many. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even like e- even the other like missions in that part of the game where you're collecting the songs, it does it, it's just you're backtracking again. You're going back to yeah. the same areas and doing going the same, back to the same thing. areas. And it's just it, I think there's one way you you lose all your weapons is that, that that's in that part yep. of the game, isn't it? Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's the second. Yep. Yeah, no, just, yeah. I don't want stealth in my Zelda game, man. I don't want that stuff. I don't want that. Especially shit. when you've got no no way to like defend yourself. Either. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, you're, you're, you've been caught. Yeah, and that's it. And like, then, and I'm right at the end of the you. game. Yeah, right at the end of the game, just let me fight the final boss now. Don't yeah. extend the game with just some arbitrary quest. Yeah. I, I I also feel like they get trigger happy with some items sometimes. Like once you got the um, I can't remember what they're called, but the upgraded claws to dig. The yeah. amount of times you had to go into those oh, underground yeah, pit, like it went. They from were an long. iron. It you like you did like twenty in the span of like in like two hours. It was ridiculous. Um. Did anyone yeah, get annoyed by the one where you had to like hit a switch? You had to go behind like the little mole guy yeah. while he hit a different oh, he was, switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, He'd yeah. always hit the switch by the time I got there, and I, it took me like four times to get it right. It's the fact that you can't turn around in a tunnel either. You have to like crawl. Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah, you have to shuffle crawl backwards. Back. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it was, like, so we're, we're shitting on it a lot here, but again, we do really like we do really like the game. Yeah, these are just the bad parts. Like this, like, like this to me was. I mean, it, it was it, it was a last pure Zelda game to be released, right? Yes. Uh, like, yes. But before Breath of the Wild came and changed things up, and obviously I, I personally wish Breath of the Wild, that, that style of play, would go go back at least to the dungeons in the way that... Yeah. Like, I'd, ra- I'd rather have me eight dungeons where you go in, you solve puzzles and stuff like that, rather than the four sacred beasts or whatever they were called. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and I, I, I really, really enjoyed the game. Um so as well, what I did like about it a lot was the graphics as well. Like this, pro- this might be one of my favorite ones graphically. Oh, like, yeah, the, beautiful. The, like, yeah, the, 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 it's like it's like kind of watercolor graphics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was gushing about the aesthetic to Alex when I was playing it. The the way it looks and the music, it made it feel like a movie to me, like a Disney movie almost. Yeah, it was very very colorful and very just nice to listen to. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, soundtracks oh, uh, yeah. for any of the Zelda games. Yeah, like beautiful great. soundtrack, incredible. Yeah. Um, recognizable yeah, songs as well. Yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 yeah, that's one thing. Is like, yeah, there's songs that that I could like name if I looked up the name and stuff, um, and like uh, place them to certain dungeons and certain places. It just felt like everything you did in that game had a sound to it, like every single action, yes. um, which I think is what made it so good. Yeah. So, so we'll move on to positive things. Um, yeah. So, so stop shitting on it. Uh, is there any, what? What was your favorite part about the game? If you had to pick something. Uh, I'll go quick again there. Like I was just saying, the music, the like music. by far, fantastic sound. Like it's a soundtrack that honestly I thought was so good that I was considering like seeing if you can buy it on like vinyl or anything. Yeah, like genuinely a really really good soundtrack, solid soundtrack. Um, Damn vinyl, got a fucking purist. Uh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, now when it comes when it comes to like music and stuff, like uh, OS, uh, soundtracks and stuff, getting them on. I don't even have a record player. <laughs> Can't play them. <laughs> um, but it's really nice to collect. We'll collect species. Um. The other thing as well, um, which is like a character specific thing, but I do like what they did with Zelda in this game. Yeah. Um, it was one of like the the only games where they actually gave us some sort of character, some personality. Um, yeah, yeah, and I actually like felt attached to this version of Zelda. Yeah. Um, but I'll let you two guys talk about what you like because I feel like I've already spoken like twice on the same thing. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll, let... uh, I, I'll, I'll go next since mm. Lewis just mentioned mine. Mm. Uh, mine is the characters. I yeah. feel like I actually cared about most of the characters in the game, especially my favorite character, which is Groose. Groose. Everyone's Groose. <laughs> he's just the best character. Um, 
But yeah, like speaking about Zelda as well, she wasn't just some random person who Link meets during his quest. Is his childhood friend, which yeah. made him like want to go and save her. It's just like with the other Zelda games. It's like, who is this girl? Why? Like, why is yeah. Link just being like, all right, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it for this random girl. So saving the monarchy it, is what he's doing. You know, he's it, it, the it, king well, of country. Yeah, it, def- <laughs> it definitely made it feel a lot more emotional when Zelda went to sleep. Yeah, um, and she was. Told, yeah. I told Link to wake up. Back up. It definitely made that whole. Like just general part, way more impactful, which I thought was great as well. Yeah, yeah, especially since she like she woke him up at the beginning, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah, he, he, he's always sleeping at the beginning of every game. Yeah, I think it's the same for me. Really, characters. The I think it was it's one of the best Zelda games for like actually tugging in your heartstrings a bit, getting you attached. It's it's less generic. It's like it's like like it's a Groose is one of the best character arcs <laughs> in any like of any Zelda game really. It's like rivaling like Midnight from Twilight Princess and things like that. He just he goes from being this bumhole to being a proper top guy by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go, we'll go into the story now. So from this point on, there will be big spoilers for Skyward Sword, but it's a ten year old game. Happy ten year anniversary to Skyward Sword, by the way. It drops this this yes. oh, yeah. drops on the ten yeah. year anniversary of Skyward Sword getting released on the Wii. So here we go, Skyward Sword. So remember when Hylia transferred her soul into a human? Thousands of years later, she's reborn into the body of Zelda, the daughter of the suspiciously owl-like headmaster of the Knight Training Academy on Skyloft. On the day of the 25th annual wing ceremony, she's knocked off her bird by a whirlwind, sent by Demise's bitch boy, Girahim, and falls to the service below. Zelda is rescued by Impa, who was sent forward through time by Hylia to help Zelda. With Impa's help, Zelda regains her memories from being Hylia. That's a fucking confusing paragraph to say that. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone's favourite green boy, Link, sets out to rescue Zelda. He's led by Fee to draw the goddess sword hidden in Skyloft by Hylia thousands of years earlier. When Link finds Zelda, he holds off Girahim while Zelda and Impa flee through a gate of time to the past, destroying on their way through. It turns out, though, there's another gate of time, and Link must gather the sacred flames through the dungeons of Hyrule in order to temper his blade into the Master Sword. He does so and activates the second gate of time. In the past, Zelda reveals she must go into a long hibernation in order to keep Dr. Demise sealed away. But, as we know, this can only last for so long. Link must travel back to the present and gather the Triforce. In order to do so, he must gather three parts of a song for a big sky whale. He then uses the Triforce to defeat Demise for good. All's well that ends well, right? Not quiet. After Zelda after, after Zelda awakes from her slumber, Girahim does what Girahim does and kidnaps her. Takes her to the past again to use her soul to revive his master. Link puts Gir- Girahim in his place, but it's too late. Turns out Girahim was just a sword of Demise and Demise is back. Link engages in a final battle with Demise, defeating him and trapping his soul in the Master Sword. But not before he swears that an incarnation of his hatred will follow those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero in a cycle without end. Link thrusts the Master Sword into a pedestal within the sealed temple, and Fee becomes forever dormant. In the present, Zelda vows to live on the surface and watch over the Triforce. And they all lived happily ever after. So we've touched on the characters a bit, so what do we think of the story? What, like, what's our general thoughts on it? Uh, someone else can go first. I feel like I've taken the... Uh, if you've got something to say, say it, man. Alex might not be ready. Yeah, Alex just say it. Ready. Yeah, really? Alex, Alex um, is ready. I'm not ready. Um... <laughs> Uh, overall, I thought the story was quite good. They played it quite safe. Uh, I don't think it really changed up the formula too much. I'd, I'd say probably the biggest thing in this is the fact that Ganon isn't the main villain. Obviously, this is pretty much like the original Ganon because Ganon is essentially just offspring of um, Demise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I felt like they, they played it very safe with the story. Didn't try to do too much outside the box. Obviously, the introduction of Girahim was quite cool because we had to have someone as like the the forefront villain for the entire game uh, and I'm actually a big fan of Girahim. Uh he is very edgy. I don't like um, him. like incredibly edgy. You don't like I him. I don't like Girahim. Oh. I, I'm just not I just, into it. Oh. Like he's so edgy, but that's sort of what makes him great. I just I just like well, how much he, of an edgy he, he is. He is a sword, so you know, um, you would expect Oh my to god, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, they played very safe. Obviously, like, uh, like we touched on a bit before with Zelda, the characters, I think, are fantastic. Um, the One of the saddest parts, most emotional parts of the game for me was um, the part with Impa, where Zelda wanted Impa to go with her. Yeah. 
um, and obviously she said no, but then when she went back to the, the present, obviously, and had been there the entire time, I thought that was really, really well done. Yeah. Um, and I honestly, it caught me off guard really bad. I wasn't expecting it. Um, I called it because of the hair, Impa's hair. Yeah, yeah, it makes then, sense. Yeah. Uh, um, but I didn't call it, but it, it really caught me off guard, and I, I really liked that. There's not many times um, where I thought the game would actually like capture me emotionally, but it managed to do it quite a few times. Uh, and I did like the change of pace with it not being Ganondorf. Like, the yeah. fact that it was Girahim, it was very nice and refreshing to see someone else. Because even at the end of this with Demise, obviously it is Demise, but it is pretty much just Ganon. Uh, he had to be in the game some way. Um, but having someone else as the lead villain, I think, was a very, very smart move. Uh, and it was nice to essentially just see an origin story, really, rather than every other game pretty much following the same formula. It's just Ganon's back, but in a different way. Um... It was a nice. It, it was definitely fresh story wise, which I was happy about because yeah. I'm used to like the the same formula over and over again. Um, so there was a lot of new things to actually like latch onto and get attached to, which um, I honestly wasn't expecting because I didn't realize demise was going to be. Obviously, I didn't. I I thought Ganon was going to be in it. I didn't realize it was just going to be a different version of Ganon, or like the original Ganon, pretty much. Um, so yeah, there was definitely a lot about the game that uh, surprised me. Yeah, well, they pulled a bait and switched, didn't they? Like, like the end of Twilight Princess, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Alex, general thoughts? Um, I thought it was it was good. Um, like Lewis said, they played it safe with like most things. Yeah. Um, I thought it was weird, like with the first boss. With it, with it being Girahim, I was like, oh shit, I'm fighting him already. Yeah. Like, he's on the front of the cover. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but then obviously, like, you fight him again later on. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, other things that I could say that are, like, relevant here. I do like that trope, to be fair. The whole fighting the, the main villain early on. Because it gives you, like, yeah. a sense of how strong they are and how weak yeah, they are currently. Yeah, you technically lose to him, don't you? Yeah, well, yeah, because he, he likes you. He, he says, I'm just going to go now. You're boring. Yeah. Mm. And then you get more powerful and then fight him later on and beat him. Yeah, and then, he, and then he gets really angry. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll get, that, get into this more when we re, re, like, rank the dungeons, but I, I, I don't like that trope at all. Because to me, really? he devalues the villain. Like if you if you face him too much and you face him so early on as well. The thing, the thing is, like you say that he just leaves, but you do kick the shit out of him first. Well, no, nah, because he blocks all your attack. You never actually hit him once properly. I'm sure you do. Or at least you're doing the same. You hit him a couple times, yeah. but most of the time he blocks him. Yeah, but like, I would have been fine without the second gear. If it was just the first one and the final fight, I would then have liked fair. it more. But you have that that second one you have is did make it a bit annoying. The one that you do in, in the, the uh, fire sanctuary. Fire. That one annoyed me because it was just the same as the first one, except yeah. this time he got annoyed at you. And it was just a bit, I don't know, it felt a bit pointless. We only needed the one and then the end. We didn't really need to test our strength twice against them. Mm. Um, but I do like that trope in general, though. I, am, I do I do like it. I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, to me, it just de- 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 like devalues the villain. Like, yeah, I, want, yeah. I, want to, I want to have a big build-up to it. Like, um, yeah. It's like to, to, you know, I don't want him to feel that impossibly powerful at the beginning. I, would, I don't want to fight him at the beginning. But it, but it sort of yeah. goes along with his cocky attitude, though. Don't, like, that's the yeah. point of the character, is he's, he was too cocky. Like, he, mm. he even says at the end that he should have killed him straight away but he didn't see him as a threat so he yeah. just didn't bother mm-hmm. uh, and i think it fits his character quite well yeah for me i, I, I really I, I love the story because it's so it puts so much in perspective of like later games and things like that like it's the start mm. of the cycle it's the start of the never ending cycle between the you know the the triforce of power the triforce of courage and the triforce of wisdom in like, like ganondorf zelda and and link yeah um it's it shows where it all came from, where this like hatred came from with from Ganondorf and how the so the the it's always Zelda's bloodline that gets like the tri you know, is the Triforce of Wisdom essentially. And it shows like that that, that bloodline has come from like, the actual goddess Hylia. Yeah. Which it makes definitely it, gives context. It, yeah, it makes yeah. it a lot more it feel a lot more special kind of thing. But like, playing the future games now, all the games we that we're gonna play after this one are definitely gonna like feel a lot different because I never knew the actual um origin story so plus it, it shows the it shows the um 
the origin of the Master Sword as well, which was the big yes. marketing point for this game, really. It was the origin of the, the, the Master Sword and how, yeah, it, yeah. how it was forged. And it's great to like get that sword that was created by the goddess and then turn it into what is actual, like basically a Ganon killer. Mm. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. That's so, a story. Isn't yeah, it? I really enjoyed it. Um, so... <clears throat> So the dungeons. So we're not going to rank the dungeons yet, but for every dungeon you get an item essentially. You also get items outside of the dungeons sometimes. Like um, I don't know, I remember the Kiwi 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 guy, the big fluffy guy. He gives you the slingshot. Is it? Yeah. Something like that. So oh, what was your yeah, favorite yeah, item yeah. in the game? Uh, favorite item. Probably the um, ghost bellows. That's interesting. I thought that was. I, I do. I do like the ghost bellows. I just liked using it. Um. Let me get him up. I thought I thought like you using it, you know, like to clear like sand and stuff was fun, and blow, just blowing enemies off like the edges and stuff yeah, was fun see, as well. That, that was fun, like blowing enemies off. But I did the sand thing. It, it yeah, the sand it, thing. It, it took it. a bit. I I, I I thought it was fun. Yeah. Um, my I'm favorite. I think of other items though. Well, there's not well, many. There's not many that are like specific. To yeah. Sky Sky. Oh, the whip. I like the whip. I like the whip. Yeah. whip was fun to use. I was going to say the whip for me as well, probably one of my favorites, just because it was actually fun. The whip in motion with your arm and stuff in the motion. Well, yeah, exactly. Oh, but like when you, because you use button controls, like you actually just like, yeah, you know, use it as a whip. It was couldn't fun be too. asked with that. <laughs> that is fun. <laughs> I also really like the bow in this game. It, for some reason, it felt, I, I liked the motion controls for it because it felt like it had proper power to it whenever you shot it. I don't mm. know if it was just the vibrations and the Joy-Con or whatever, but it felt it felt powerful. Um, so I really liked that. The rest of the items, honestly, uh, wasn't a huge fan. Like obviously the bug net, no one cares bug net. The 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 bug, um, the flying oh, bug. The the flying bug was shit. Hated it so slow. Really? I wish it had a boost button, bro. But um, no, you can't. You, you can well, get you, a boost. So this is it. You can't get a boost. Yeah, my, my, favorite, my favorite is the Beatles. Get a boost. My favorite is the Beatles ah. specifically when you're graded. I, I, I like that. I like those kind of puzzles where you have to like, so you, you send it out and then you go around the room like moving bombs to certain areas to talk yeah, the way. Yeah. I really like that. that yeah, I, definitely. My I favorite. mean, maybe maybe that was a factor for me because I, I didn't upgrade it, so it yeah. was very slow. <laughs> Very, very slow, and I didn't really like using it. Well, yeah, I mean, the... even when I upgraded it, I didn't really like using it. No, because sometimes it was just annoying to use. Well, I used it sometimes just to kill enemies. Like, if I saw enemies on the horizon, I'd just go pick up a bomb and, and, and kill them. It's to save, save fighting them, doesn't it? You know, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. fighting with the controls. Um, <laughs> so again, and then the, the bow and the claw shot both feel as good as they all they always yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The game, like, uh, I felt the claw shot felt a bit like luster. I'm not gonna lie, it didn't really? feel as good as it. Yeah, I don't know, something about it. Maybe that's why Princess it wasn't as good. Yeah, maybe the range on it or something, it just felt a bit... It just felt like it didn't really get me far. Like, it obviously helped you get places, but it felt like it was very restrictive on how far it could actually go and yeah. where it could get you I to. I don't even barely remember even using the claw shot, if I'm being honest. You get them fairly late. You get them yeah, fairly. it's yeah. like the back, the back half of the game, really, where you yeah. use it. I like the fact that you get both in the at the same time in this game. Yes. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We only keep mentioning Twilight Princess, but you only get those one at a time. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, so you use them slightly differently. Uh, so let's should we rank the dungeons? Uh, yeah, how are we gonna do it? Yeah. My, the way I was gonna do it is I was gonna say my favorite one. Yeah. The um my least favorite one, and then my runner up. Because instead of naming every single one, because it's just no one's gonna, it's too many numbers, isn't it? Like, yeah, fair point. Like, who cares what's fifth? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair point. Yeah. Well, let's start. Let's start with Alex. What's your, what's your, what's your rank? Because it gives you favorite, your least favorite. Okay, this isn't like including the boss for anything, but yeah. I like the sand ship the best. That's my number one. I hate, I hate the boss yeah. in the sand ship. This is it. Ex no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah, the that's only that's thing like, I hated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your least favorite? Uh, the sky dungeon. Sky Keep, Sky Keep, or Sky is it the Triforce Keep. one? Yes, the, the Triforce, Triforce one. one. Yeah, okay. Interesting, very interesting. I did. Right, I'll just say why I didn't like that one. I didn't like the the tile thing where I had to like keep moving the dungeon around. Yeah, I thought it was just really annoying, and it just kept because I. Whenever I did it, I'd always end up by by a lot though, and I don't have a key. And I'm just like, fuck's sake! And I gotta go all the way back, <laughs> and the puzzle's all fucked up, and then I've got like exit the dungeon, come back in. Yeah, just irritating. I, I get where you're coming from. There is is quite low on my on my list, but he's, mm. I, I, in, I thought it was okay. Lewis, uh, my favorite one is Sky Keep. Oh. Um, I really, really liked that it took parts of each um temple that you'd been to, 
uh, and each room was dedicated to like a certain part of different temples. Um, there was some part. There was one part in particular that was really slow, and it was the part where you had to like go across the fire. Um, it was just really, really slow. Like you had to set up one of the platforms, and it, it slowly, slowly went across the fire, and it just was. It was like the red Triforce piece or something. I can't remember which one it was, but it was just very slow. But overall, the Sky Keep. Um, I just really like the maze aspect to it. I liked how you could move the rooms about and attach them to other rooms, and you could also open up a bunch of shortcuts, yeah. uh, which made getting back to different parts of the maze really easy and quick. Um, I just thought it was very... I thought it was very out there and very, very different, so I really appreciated that. My runner-up was the ship. Uh, if it wasn't Skykeep, I really did love the ship. Uh, and my least favorite was Skyview, which was the first one. I just thought it was... Very baby's first dungeon, very, like, getting you into it, teaching you, like, what a dungeon's about. But overall, it was just that round circle in the center and then a couple rooms to attach to it. It wasn't, it wasn't really anything too interesting, honestly. Yeah, it was like baby's first dungeon, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, so my favorite was the Ancient Cistern, the Water Temple. And this okay. is the only Zelda game where they've absolutely nailed the Water Temple. I, I, I've loved it. I had the best boss but in the game, by far. Um, like, it's, it's, so like when you Joe, you go underneath the um the the big structure in the middle, and you go down yes. into the bottom, and there's zombie moblins, zombies in the yeah, basement. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like, and so like you you, don't, you go down there and you sort stuff out, and then you climb up the rope, and these zombies are chasing after you. And it's great. Yeah, that part was really cool. Yeah, it's just, oh it was yeah, you, yeah, I was terrified when they were uh, latched onto your legs, and you had to shake them off and kick them. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I just I. Like usually in like the water temple is my least favorite in Zelda games, but I just feel like the apps just absolutely nailed it. There wasn't one part of that, that, that dungeon that I didn't like. Even the swimming was fine. Like I, I wasn't using motion controls, so the swimming with me was, was was fine. Yeah. For the most part, as long as I didn't have to do anything specific. And I like the puzzle where you had to do things in a certain order, so you had to find out the order from the, like the back of the the statue's hands and um, yes. various other places. I like that one. It was like, I think it was a cool puzzle. I had to take a picture of the uh, of the hint. <laughs> uh, because I'd, I'd instant as soon as I left that, that message, I instantly forgot what, what which I was doing. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, um, Admittedly, I put that high up as well. Even though I didn't like the water aspect of it, I did yeah. put it quite high up because it just looked really nice. Honestly, yeah, it was my it was my runner up yeah. for yeah. favorite. Yeah. So my runner up was the Sunship. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah everyone just, seems to be. Yeah, everyone. it just it was just a really good. One. It was just cool. It was like a pirate ship in the middle of the desert. It was great. Yeah, mm-hmm. I liked the part before the pirate ship as well. Like where you um oh, like go on like the the coaster oh, yeah. and then yeah. you go on the the ship as well and then like you search him for the ship as well. Yeah. You have to shoot it. I like those little robot dudes as well. They're pretty cool. Yeah, they they were cool. Even though like, half of them are just so upset to see you. Yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah, I just brought you back to life, you, you little shit. Talk. You've been dead for years. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. You're going back to, yeah. uh, back well, to the well, ground. Well, the great part about it was you had that one time stone in the middle of the ship, and like, no, like wherever yes. you are on the ship, you need to find a way to hit that time stone to change whatever room you're in. And I really, yeah. was really good. It was like fucking ingenious. And my, my least favorite one was like Lewis Skyview Temple. Like, I would. Like I was saying before, you're fighting the the main, like the final, well, not the final boss, but like the main antagonist over and over again. It just it devalues it. I would have much preferred an original boss. Like I can't remember another Zelda game that's done this where the major major fight the last boss. Like, yeah, first. it's really, really strange. A yeah, unique boss. I, I just feel it like really think. devalues gear at him, and like and this Skyview was one of the only temples where I had to look up a guide because I was that pissed off. It was one of the gem puzzles. And oh. the, the, the gem was hidden in such a, like, a stupid place. It was like under a bridge or something like that. And there was, yes. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, it won't go into my head to look think. under there. No, this is incredible. I think I had the same issue, actually. Because yeah. I was complaining to Alex, because literally, I kept reading the the hint, and it kept saying, like, one's above, one's below, something, yeah. something. And I kept looking below in the completely wrong room. Yeah, And then, too. like, an hour in, I went into the room, and for some reason, something hit me, and I went, if it's under the bridge, I'm going to be, like, really mad. Yeah. <laughs> and I went under the bridge, and it was right there, and, oh, it was so annoying. But then I said to Alex, I was like, I don't know if that was a badly designed puzzle, or if that's just my fault, and I can't blame the game for that. But the fact but... that all three of us had the same issue. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it really stumped me. <laughs> I was so close to looking up a guide. Yeah. I, I just, I just, I just got, I got really, I think I was like, it's something like half an hour just looking around. <laughs> I just didn't, didn't think for a second to go yeah. under the bridge, because I, I didn't know the bridge had an underneath bit. I thought yeah, like, yeah, it was same. just like stones. It didn't, uh, didn't uh, like, occur to me at all. 
But yes, like, like, I've never, I, most Zelda dungeons are quite fine, I'm fine with. I don't have to look up a guide or anything like that without really annoying me. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. So is there anything else anyone wants to talk about on Skyward Sword before we wrap it up? Uh, I'll say my favourite boss, because uh, I didn't talk about it with my... Um... Because even though my favorite was Sky Keep, the boss definitely wasn't my favorite because it was just it was just Gary Him. Yeah. Um, my favorite boss in the game was Clock Clock Toes, I believe. Yeah, Clock the, Toe? the ancient yeah. system. Um, yeah, yeah, for the ancient system boss with like all the all the uh, the hands and stuff. Like he was incredibly cool. Um, he had really good phases, uh, and that boss fight did a good job at making you feel powerful when you got to pick up the massive sword and stuff and just smack him. Um, I thought that was a really, really good boss fight. Um, my least favorites were probably just the the Girahim ones. Like they were fine. Yeah. The last Girahim boss fight, uh, and the Demise one, that very good. But the two leading up to it, they weren't really fights. They were just again sort of time wasters, really. Um, I'm sure if, yeah, we, Clock... if we include the imprisoned in boss fights as well, I'm sure that'll be at the bottom. That, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. The bottom. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, ridiculous that they made you do that. What three? Yeah, one thing three or four times. Yeah. Um, I like the part like where the incorporated Groose because I was like, "Oh shit, yes, Groose yeah. is helping me out." Yeah, but it, it that was still annoying to like control and stuff. Yeah, uh, I think we all have the same yeah, favorite boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it, with the imprisoned. It was just, it was annoying because he took up the entire pathway. So it's like if you got knocked if you got knocked off, it was just a nightmare to get back round to him, especially with yeah. like speed yes. and moving. Yeah, sometimes made it really annoying. It, it literally just depended on how it fell because you could either get round him or you'd have to jump off and jump back up and it was just really yeah. stupid. And it just makes me laugh yeah. that the demise who at the end is like this massive hulking dude like before like, <laughs> like his, his other form is just a mouth with big chubby toes. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> can, we, can we can we talk about the demise boss fight? Like, Go on. I want to know how you guys found it. I, 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 don't, I don't think I died on it or anything like that. I, I didn't die. I thought it was the easiest boss fight of all time. Yeah. I died. To I, I beat it in like 40 seconds, 50 seconds. I died to Demise twice because, um, and this is like a slight issue I have with the controls, is the lock-on on that game, the range is very strange on whether it decides to knock uh, lock on or not. And on the parts where he'd charge you, because um, obviously he had two attacks in that final part. It was the uh, Skyward Strike. And yeah. it was the, he'd charge you and like kick you or something. Um, if he was doing his Skyward Strike and you were too close, you couldn't really stop it. So every time he'd dive you, I'd run away. But if you'd run away too far, the lock-on wouldn't work anymore. So you'd try to turn around um, to like face him and get the lock-on. But if you weren't close enough, it wouldn't lock on. So I'd end up facing some random direction. Uh, and he'd just come and kick me in the back of the head and I'd die. Um, yeah. So I did die twice, admittedly. I was also on, like, six hearts or something. I didn't heal because, I don't know, I'm stupid. <laughs> um, but once I did it twice, I did the third run flawlessly. Like, I did the blocking part flawlessly to get him into his second phase. Uh, and the second part, you only had to hit him with, like, three Skyward Strikes, I think it is, and he just dies. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that hard to be honest. I was expecting more phases. Yeah, there is a trick to the. Demise yeah, I was fight. expecting more phases because, like, when I killed him, I was like, "Oh wait, that's it." Yeah, yeah. there's nothing else. It's not like Gandalf, like, just messaged White Princess again, where he's got like four phases, and you're like, oh, "Fuck it out." Yeah, I suppose it's because you fought Gary him before, and I guess like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah but yeah, there, there is a trick to demise fighting. It is all about distance. You can't go to. You need to be. You need to be as close to him as possible, but while having enough room to to like deflect and like or block whatever he's doing. Because if you go too mm. far away, then he'll just charge it, and it is like it's really hard to to, you, to, to, like, to stop him. You you also have to believe in RNG and hope that you get a lightning strike. On yeah, because yeah. it's just random. I think I got so yeah. many lightning strikes. I think that's how I won. No, it I, was... like, I won so fast. Like there, there was a couple of times where I was holding it up for a solid twenty seconds. You know? <laughs> it so, came. yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything else? I believe that's I it. I think if there is anything else, but no, I think that's it. So uh, our next game in the series will be. I think is the Minish Cap in it. That's next. Yes. Yeah, Minish Cap yeah. is hundred percent next. Yeah, min min Minish Cap. So we're gonna start playing that now. We're not. We're, we've got a little looser schedule with these. We're just gonna release them whenever we've played them. So it won't be yeah. like once a month or anything like that. Could be twice a month. Could be none in a month. We'll see. We'll see I, how it goes. I don't know if it was made clear or not. We are playing these in 
Oh, yes. chronological, order. chronological order. Yes, so we yeah. do. We, we're gonna we're gonna play out the Ocarina of Time. Then we'll play the Fallen Hero timeline. The, then the Child timeline, and then the the Adult timeline, and then uh, then yeah. we'll move on to like Breath of the Wild and things like that. Yeah, we're hoping to like ho- coincide this with Breath of the Wild two releasing whenever it does release. Yeah, it's gonna be um, difficult because we don't know when it's yeah, coming. Yeah, we don't we don't know yet. We're hoping it's all just gonna line up magically, but yeah. Yeah, expect these for like the next like year or so, just randomly. Yeah, well, we've got, yeah. we've got twenty games to get through, so yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it'll, it'll take up a considerable amount of time. So, um, our next episode after this will be our video game book club episode. We're going to be re- reviewing uh, Mario Party Superstars. Mario Party. Yeah. No. That, yeah. 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 Mario yeah, Party. Yeah, Mario Party. Yeah. And that'll be up on the thirtieth. We'll also be doing our quiz every two weeks. Take a look at our socials to find out dates and times. You can catch up with all things Play Talk Repeat on our socials. We are at Play Talk Repeat everywhere. And uh, yeah, I think that is it. Uh, please like and subscribe. It helps us out, and you get notified when we go live with quizzes and stuff like that and streams. So uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's well, it. We shall yeah, that's see it. See you later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.